wrote a book about his madcap adventures. It's called Death Punched, Surviving Five Finger Death Punches, Metal Mayhem. Uh, the audio book is out now. He's got a new band, so lots of stuff to talk about this guy with this guy. So let's welcome in Jeremy Spencer. What's up, my brother? Hey, how's it going there? Everything's <clears throat> good. Haven't seen you in a while. I know it's been. I'm trying to think what show it was. Was it a Jersey show? You know what? I'm, the one I'm thinking about. Uh, maybe it was Jersey. Yeah, but 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 one of, one of my best memories is with you guys, and that was at Hellfest in France. Uh, and and I walked on stage with you guys. You know, you're headlining whatever, whichever the nights. And I walked on stage with you guys, and you guys were so cool to let me stand on the side and and watch the whole thing. And man, that was that was really an amazing moment. You know, that festival is completely nuts. Totally nuts, man. All those festivals over there. A hundred thousand people in you know in this tiny this tiny. It's sort of like Sturgis, right? Because Sturgis. You know, normal population during the year is like 5,000. You know, when it's bike week, you know, it's 505,000. And the same in Clisson, France, where they that's where they make the uh, the white wine grapes. That's like 6,000 people. And then it's 106,000 people when Hellfest is in town. And it's just such a, a crazy festival. It's packed every year. The guy owns the land. So he has those like giant Hellfest trees and all kinds of crazy, you know, you know, a roller coaster and a, a Ferris wheel and all that shit. People, uh, there's like tons of tents. Everyone's crashed out in tents all yeah. over the place. Yeah, That's there's crazy. people zip lining during your set. It's yeah, it's like <laughs> an, it's a heavy metal amusement park basically. But yeah, that whatever whenever it was that I saw you, man, it was um, you know it was just a that was a great memory for sure. And man, a lot has changed uh, <laughs> since then. Uh, you've gone yeah. on to do a couple of different things, but let's start out with the the book, um, the, the the physical the physical book or the printed book, however you uh, consume books these days, uh, was a New York Times bestseller, so congratulations. Um, Thank you. And Alice Cooper says the book is, quote, one of the best rock and roll addiction and redemption stories since Nikki Six's heroin diaries. That's high praise from a, a from a, a rock survivor himself. Man, he's he's probably one of the coolest dudes ever, man. I love Alice. He's so nice. Yeah, and uh, obviously again, again, fellow survival su survivalist, fellow uh, addict. Do, do, do you uh, do you lean on him in in that way as well? Because because you were, you're a sober uh, person for many years now. Not so much. I mean, it's it's interesting to to hear their stories and to kind of see how they dealt with everything and what they went through, and to like see some old video and photos of of what they look like at the tail end of their. Uh, addict you know they're using and stuff it, it was crazy to see those videos and you're like wow man and then I look back at pictures of me and videos too and I'm like holy shit I really look like that <laughs> yeah so you know I, I basically just decided hey man I know what I'm gonna get if I keep going down this path I need to quit so um you know there was just so much happening with the band and a lot of positive things I'm like am I really gonna throw it away for this stupid shit so I, I had enough so that was it yeah, and, and it's crazy, man, because I only know you as a sober guy. So when I hear you telling that story for the audio book, I'm like, wait, I don't know <laughs> this guy at all. Um, what, what's one of your, uh, I, what, what's one of your favorite stories from the book from the, the artist formerly known as the addict, Jeremy Spencer? Well, I'll tell you one that kind of made it in the book, but then we deleted it out. Um, I was partying with a girl on the bus and I left the back lounge and one of my other bandmates went back in there and they locked the door and they locked me out of the lounge. I'm like, Hey, what the fuck? So I'm pounding on the door and they finally let me in. I'm like, I'm glad I, you know, you would lock me out of my back lounge with the blow <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, and you guys are going to do it. And I'm, I'm the one that brought you on the bus and it's my blow. So she's like well you don't have to be a dick about it whatever so we ended up hanging out that night and then when we got to the next city i said my goodbyes or whatever and then apparently she came back to the other bandmates hotel room but she showed up with no teeth like she had taken her teeth out oh. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> he's telling me like this fucking chick showed up with no teeth. I won't mention who, who it is, but you know, I'm like, holy fuck, that's really disgusting and amazing. You know? <laughs> right. Well, you never know. You you know, some somebody in the band might have had a, a, a gumming fetish. You know, <laughs> never know, man. Especially in this cast of characters. <laughs> well, and that's the crazy thing, Jeremy. It's like. You know, when I first started, you know, meeting you guys and hanging out, um, it was still a party band. And then the last couple of times that I was lucky enough to, to hang or, or come on the bus, it was a totally dry tour. Man, did you ever think the, the band would progress to that point? Well, I yeah, I did. I mean, I thought that maybe all but one of us would. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, you know, our bus was certainly a dry bus. Um, we made it as fun as we could. I, I would, I would just like after the show make it crew horror movie night, and we'd watch like cheesy B horror films and eat bus nachos and until it was time to leave. You yeah. know, that was kind of what it turned into. But it, you know, it was cool. It was fun. I'd done so much of the other, and I was so tired of feeling like complete shit. Like yeah. you wake up in St. Louis in August at. 2 p.m. and you have to go on stage and do a drum solo on a drum riser that's going up and it was like i can't keep doing this shit man this is awful yeah it's almost like it's almost like the high is being sober right yeah for sure because it it's a business and it was was like okay you could treat this as a business or you can just fuck this all away like so many do and yeah we were really fortunate to be one of the last bands that got in that were selling records. So it was like, why would you fuck this? This is a great opportunity, you know? And um, we were really fortunate to to get in when we did and to sell so many fucking records, man. No, yeah, and it's still going today. And, and you know, you, you mentioned there, there was one guy in the band that uh, not, not only you, but probably most people didn't think was ever going to get it together, uh, which was Ivan. Um, and I don't know if you, you're still in touch with him, but it, it seems like that he's, he's turned the corner now for the last few years. He's trying to help out other addicts. What, what do you think it was for him? What was the, the final thing for him where, he, you know, he was finally the last one to drop? I honestly can't answer for him, I don't know, okay. but I mean, certainly getting th threatened of losing your job might scare you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> scare, I, I guess they call it scared straight. Mm. Um, even that, though, I'm not so sure works because you have to decide. I've had enough. I mean, nobody can make you do anything. So, you know, props to him for deciding that it was enough and and to uh, go down a different path. And it looks like he's doing good and and the rest of the guys. So that's that's really good for them, you know. Oh, absolutely, of course, man, and that and look, the, the longevity that will help the longevity of the band, obviously. Um, you know, he's a singer. We all know singers are notorious for you know the, you have to get your rest, you have to be as healthy as you possibly can to get out there and use your your voice all the time. Um, but yeah, and it's because I don't really, you know, I don't have an addictive personality, but I can only imagine, man. It's like when you're in the middle of it, nothing else matters. Um, for you, what was what was the toughest thing to give up where when, when you when you were like i'm done but then you're like oh but this one's really going to be the tough one well i did to me i just thought you would i would be missing out on a good time but it's really right. the more i think back on it there were so many nights that weren't a good time <laughs> you know like <laughs> there were a few magical nights where you go fuck that was the best party ever but that, that just didn't happen very often we were just rolling down the highway and getting destroyed killing our bodies for what you'd wake up at fucking noon or 1 p.m or 4 p.m rotted oh, yeah. and feeling like complete shit that's not a party that's the shit so um you know i whenever i quit i i knew that what i was getting and uh but you know it, my mind you're always afraid of missing out on the good time but i i had so many more good times being sober because i remembered it and yeah. You know, I was probably in, in healthier company, <laughs> so yeah. it was cool. It was better, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's funny, too. And so and you stayed, obviously, with the band, you know, throughout that um, that period, because, again, when I when I met you, you were already uh, on the straight and narrow. Um, but uh, it's funny on your Instagram, you say uh, former drummer until or before I turned 70. So <laughs> was that one of the things, uh, your, your physical health that, that led you to, to part ways with with Five Finger? Yeah, my back. Um, I had some back issues and I had to get a couple surgeries and the second one was brutal. I had to get like disc replacement and fusion. Yeah. 
and um, I had like deter you know um, deteriorating discs, so wow. it was really painful to play, and I wasn't playing very good. So it was like I'm not enjoying this, and I don't feel like I'm doing is doing it like I used to be able to. It's kind of like an athlete when they're aging and mm. they can't just quite do it like they they used to. I mean, the brain's working, but it's just not connecting with the limbs. And I was like, "Fuck, man! All right, it might be time to to recognize that I need to step off." So I did. Yeah, man, because that's such a tough decision, man. You know, you, you've you gone down this crazy rock and roll road, you you survived it, and then your body goes, okay, but now we're out, so yeah. <laughs> you're out of luck. But you don't want to give up music either, right? Exactly. I mean, I, I love music, and I was making my own music f forever, um, so I've always done that. It's just uh, as far as that touring lifestyle and that machine, doing what I had to do physically for so long, I just, I had to step off the train and I had to address, you know, the surgeries and it was really depressing. It was a hard surgery. Um, it was a big setback. I was depressed for a while yeah. and I, it, you know, it hurts, it's painful. It sucks. I mean, I, it's, I, I didn't get hooked on pain meds or anything. I would take like Advil and shit. Oh wow. So it was, it, but it sucked. And, um, they had to like go in through the front and the back. So they took my guts out on the table and everything. It was a brutal surgery. Yeah. Are there any pictures in the book of that? No, because the I wrote the book before. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, that'll be for the second book. Right. And you can call it Jeremy, Jeremy Spencer Spills His Guts, literally. Yeah, uh, inside. <laughs> and, and apparently you do still have stories left over because you mentioned one of them. So is that is that something already like tingling in the back of the head there? Well, I'd, I'd actually already written half of uh, another book, and then I was like, I don't have this in me to finish it right now because mm -hmm. you have to go promote it. And I just didn't, I just left the band and stepped off that whirlwind, you know, yeah. crazy life. And I was like, I can't relive it right this second. But down the road, that might happen. I mean, half of it was written, so why not? And you did all the narration for the uh, the audio book, did because you know a lot of people will bring in guest uh, talkers and readers or whatever. Were you tempted to do that at all, or? Well, after about the first day, yeah, I was like, this sucks. <laughs> this is gonna suck. But it, I finally yeah. got into a groove, and then it was cool. But uh, I thought it'll be if I do that, the fans won't like that as much. They're, they they want to hear it from me, so um, I just toughed it out and stuck to it and did it <laughs> hey bro it's bro all the pain you've been through man in your life yeah you go yeah i, I can i can get through this no problem you but know? the funny thing the funny thing is like how often do you read out loud for that long you know yeah. so i'm like blowing <laughs> it and you have to nail it and, fuck, and i'm like fuck i kept fucking up and getting pissed at myself <laughs> but you know i got through it yeah there's probably a lot of people who are like if they started reading, they'd be like, oh, my God, how is this guy alive? Like, uh, did another Coke story? What the hell is going on here, man? But, yeah, uh, yeah and, and you you know, you're, you have, you're so, such a gregarious guy. And, and it really, a lot of this stuff is so personal to you. Um, was it, what was, you think, was the kind of the most uh, uncomfortable thing for you to reveal in the book? Um, probably just doing the shitty things I did to my friends parents growing up you know like mm. stealing money and yeah you know just disappointing them that that breaks my heart to see you know when you disappoint your mom and she's crying uh, and you're, you know, you're like uh, god damn i feel awful so kind of whenever i would write this stuff it was healing to me some way but it, it also you know ripped the scab back off reliving it mm. um because, you know, some of the stories are really funny, but some of them are, are pretty terrible. Um, but it, I think it was good therapy. <laughs> yeah. Is uh, Mom Spencer still with us? She is. She's 80. She has more energy than I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe she'll uh, play uh, drums in the next uh, Five Finger Death Punch uh, she could probably do configuration. It. She <laughs> because I haven't, I haven't seen them with... Uh, with the with the new drummer, I don't know if you passed that torch along, or they they just kind of they found somebody new. But uh, they 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 see, seem to keep going. I mean, Jason just left, so uh, we'll, we'll see what uh, goes on for those guys. But for you, you've moved on, and you're doing a, a band called uh, Psychosexual, which is, it seems to be a bit of a, a concept. So please explain it. You know what? I always grew up 
a fan of theatrical music, you know, yeah. but Kiss, Devo, bands that had something interesting to look at. <clears throat> and I, that's what I had envisioned for this. It's just supposed to be fun. It's theater, man. Um, the, <laughs> the music is, uh, it's definitely not typical of what's happening right now, but we didn't want to do another active rock band. You know, we wanted to. Right. Let's put up the video, guys. Let's put up a little video while we're talking about it so people could get an, an idea of where, of where you're going with this stuff. Um, yeah, if you, if, you were, if, if, you, if you were in the Five Finger Death Punch, and this is not that. So Definitely not. Definitely not. And uh, I, a lot of those people let me know about it right away. <laughs> They're like, what the fuck is this shit? I'm like, hey, man. You know, I, I've already done the Five Finger thing. I want to do something different. And... Everyone, I mean, shit, we're already on album five. We've been working our ass off during this uh, pandemic, so, because there's no shows. <laughs> right. So we've, we've recorded, we've written and recorded that many, so th maybe somebody doesn't like this first thing they've heard, but there's so much different shit. Um, that's the beauty of music, and also the, be the beauty of doing theater, theatrical type music as characters. You can kind of get away with doing different things, and uh, so we, we've experimented, and we're doing all kinds of different eclectic styles and um it's the, you know music is basically snapshots in time albums are snapshots of where you are at the time and that's always changing and evolving so yep. i can't wait to just keep moving forward and have people hear the new stuff and yeah. you know we're working hard every day um it's certainly not for everyone it's um it's def drastically different than death punch that's for sure yeah but but but, uh, but i think that's good because if people dig it then they and they still like five finger then now you have you know you still have your one of your favorite bands and now you get a new favorite from a guy that you loved from the previous band so and you're singing now, so that's obviously a big change. So let's let's meet the band. Can you put up the uh, put up the graphic so we can uh, meet the band? Because uh, again, it's a concept. So, Devil Daddy. That's me. That's you know. <laughs> yeah, Crucifier. Well, these guys are all Vegas guys. They're not named guys. Um, they're really talented guys. They're great. We all get along great, and that's really important when you're starting a band. Um, you never know how it's going to work out, but everyone just seems to to get along and, and dig their role and we're having a lot of fun we've done like a live stream show which is really all we can do at this point but we've really just been making albums um working our asses off but i you know we everyone came up with their own kind of fun name um their stage name mm -hmm. crucifier on guitar yeah well that's <laughs> hey listen that's a good thing if, if they're not known that you just if you don't like the old crucifier you're just bringing a new crucifier yeah, bringing crucifier too oh. yeah <laughs> yeah hopefully that never has to happen but i guess that is one good thing about uh yeah. covering yeah. people's identities like ghost did that you could just you know bring in different people but hopefully that never has to happen because we really get along well and we really enjoy each other and, what, and what's it is this crucifier have a particular background or just a local musician vegas He's a guitar player who was in another band that I won't mention, but uh, okay. he's, he's a producer. He and I write all the songs, and we produce the records together. He's a very talented individual. Um, really grateful to have him in my musical path. Uh, it, was, it just lined up perfectly. I've known him for a long time, and uh, we get along great. And I mean, we're cranking material out left and right. Yeah, and man. It's really, I'm enjoying it. It's, and that's what it's about. You're supposed to enjoy every bit of the process. Yeah, and 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 then who who are the other members there? Well, Volik on drums is really talented drummer. He's more of a prog drummer than a than kind of what our material is, but he can play anything. He's one of those guys that you're like, how the fuck are you doing that? You know, <laughs> he's like he's 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 kind of a math metal drummer guy, but yeah. he you know he's really good. Um, so it's it's it, that's a relief. That position's a big position to me too. You know, it's important that that guy. Sure understands how important that role is he's very visual which is cool doing all the stick tricks mm -hmm. and shit that i love and um astaroth the bass player really solid groove bass player hell of a guy sweetheart guy um ev everyone's gets along great it's just so much fun because you get to dress up and act fucking crazy and there's really no <laughs> rules you know it's just as crazy as we can make it we make it from, from the uh the the uh 
imaginative mind of Jeremy Spencer there. Um, and I'm sure that, yeah, the drum slot in that band is, is definitely a little tricky, man, because you being the... You being the drummer that you are, you ain't no slouch, man. You won a lot of awards uh, and got a lot of accolades for being a drummer. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, Steven Tyler has tortured Joey Kramer for about the last 50 years <laughs> because yeah. Tyler is a drummer. And, uh, man, Joey, Joey cannot miss a beat, man. That's true. Yeah, I mean, I, I've also kind of learned from watching that, too, that that's not cool, you know, to micromanage somebody's position. That's, no, but it, it's supposed to be you're expressing yourself. I mean, obviously everyone has to do what needs to be done, but to micromanage their whole gig, that it takes the fun out of it. So, yeah. you know, I, the goal is to find somebody that gets it and I found somebody that gets it and he nails it. So I don't have to go there and do the, the whole fucking Steven Tyler oh, yeah, yeah. direct <laughs> thing, you know, and that works for them. That's a great dynamic or whatever, maybe, but uh, yeah. I would never really see myself doing that. I, I wouldn't want that done to me. Yeah, I mean, people wonder why Joey Kramer has that 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 little twitch. He's uh, even getting yelled at for fifty years by a singer. So <laughs> yeah, PTSD maybe a little bit. A little bit, yeah. And and I don't know if you want to talk about this at all, but I think it's pretty common knowledge. But I think when you first left the band, did, did you did you you became a, a cop, right? Yeah, I uh, I had some buddies on the in the police department back in Indiana, and they were like, "Hey, man, I don't know what you're doing, but if you want to come try to." spend a week and take, you know, all the tests, we could probably get you in as a reserve police officer. And I'm like, there you Shit, are. all right, I'm going to try it. And <laughs> I went there and I studied hard and I fucking kicked as, as much ass as I could. And I got sworn in. So, um, and then right after I got a back surgery oh. and then the pandemic hit, I was like, fuck. So I, the only thing I've been able to do so far is to go back and like help raise money for the community. Um, with like toy drives and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But I, I lend a hand whenever I can. It's just that uh, there hasn't been a big need. It's a tiny town. So they don't need fucking, you know, a whole force working it when there's like 800 people in the town, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, if, if David Lee Roth ever goes back, wants to go back to being an EMT and, and you could be the cop in that town, he could drive the ambulance, that'd be a hell of, I'd move there. That could be a reality show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, that's 50-50. Yep, Don't take yep. that. That's me and you together. All right. That's right. All right. All right we'll you work. Put, up, <laughs> put the money up up front, and then we'll <laughs> we'll, work, we'll work on it together. Yeah. Well. All right, well, that's your part. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't in Five Finger Death Punch. I don't have platinum albums. Uh, <laughs> the other show we could do, I noticed on your Instagram, is uh, um, a T-shirt collection show because it seems like you're very you proudly model them. Um, God, all my years of especially from doing that metal show. I mean, my collection just got ridiculous um at one point i've, I've kind of called the herd a bit but i'm still well over 300 um is, is it yours very sizable or is it mo mainly focused on kiss because they see you're wearing the kiss shirt there it's no i i have a lot of bands it's getting sizable it's getting to the point you'll laugh at this i but you know those merchandise like alphabetizing letter things that yes. are on the racks. <laughs> yes. I fucking bought those and I, I, I had to do it because I'm like, where the fuck is that shirt? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, dude, I did the same thing. I, when I moved into my house 10 years ago, my, my, I asked my girlfriend for my birthday, please buy me a, uh, a wardrobe rack. So I have the same thing. I don't have the dividers like you do, but it's, they're all in alphabetical order because I had 600 of them. Um, ah, 500 and 97 of them black um <laughs> and 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 i i moved down to the jersey shore two months before hurricane sandy i'm 600 feet from the water smart yeah. investor here yeah. uh, and uh, and uh, and as the water's coming into the house and my girlfriend's yelling at me start throwing down t-shirts to you know to start to oh. soak up the water that was coming in to the house and and now i'm in a panic because i don't know what to do it's like do i lose my hardwood floors or my favorite Iron Maiden t-shirts. I, I don't know what to do here. <laughs> so now I'm trying to make snap decisions. All right, I can afford to lose this one. And I'm winging them down to her. And she's putting them up against the door. Uh, but uh, so that helped weed some of them out. But um, but I noticed, you, you, especially Kiss. How many uh, Kiss ones do you have? Oh, shit. I'm not for sure, man. I, I honestly buy a Kiss shirt probably three times a week. I'm, <laughs> they're those bastards, man. They just uh, they keep coming up with cool shit that I have to have. <laughs> I really, it is an addiction now. It's like, it's my new thing. I bought a fucking new kisser. I'm buy it. 
Hey, hey, and you know what? The other thing is, man, it's great that no matter how old we get, man, we're still 15 in our hearts, yeah. man. So, um, hey, man, I wish you the best of luck with uh, Psychosexual. Um, obviously, with the book, it's out. The audio version of the book is out now. Where can people, what's the best place for people to go to get that? Well, they can start, just go to uh, jeremyspencermerch.com, and then there's links that will send you everywhere to buy it. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it's the audio book. Obviously, the, the printed version is out there in the world. New York Times uh, bestseller. Uh, it's got the seal of approval from Alice Cooper himself. It's called Death Punched. And let me get this right. Surviving Five Finger Death Punch Metal Mayhem out now. And uh, I can't wait to read it myself or listen to it in the car. And uh, brother, thanks for some time today. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Good seeing you again. All right, bro. See you soon. Be healthy. All right. All right, take care, man. Be well. All right, awesome.